Because like we weren't allowed to make content. We weren't allowed to. I was, people were not allowed to speak. To so I walked in after solitaire. I get out. And I walked in. You could smell the fear in the room. Multiple people, multiple people came and were like, just so you know, no cameras allowed. People were, were really like, terrified. To take it to the level of there is a decree, do not react. That to me is shtick. That's acting. That's phony. That's everything Barstool has never been. Let that guy walk out of the room, and what happens happens. Yeah. That's Barstool. When the boss thinks no one's working, that's a problem because people get fired. I don't know what New York does. No. New York put it on the TV. You were there. New York had it on the TVs. Like, that's crazy. It's just they have nothing to do. Like, that's how I scream names. Like, get the fucking work. Why are you just sitting there? I was pretty pissed. I have no misgivings about what the appearances are or what the opinions are of the two offices. It's it's one thing when it's, like, it's earned. I don't like when people, like, people don't work here. Yeah. If, if you want to say they're more successful people there, more likable, more talented, that's fine. Sure. That's fine. But people do work, right? yeah. When Dave said it, that's when I started being like, okay, it's getting out of control now. Right. Like, it almost makes it seem like you guys have absolutely nothing to do in that New York office. When I saw it for the first time, I was m more like, is this true? Like, I've obviously, I'm aware people say it. And then when it gets back to the boss and he's saying it, then it's a, pro like a real problem. So I, I reached out to some behind the scenes people and was just like, exactly the question, is it true? I did some research. Ooh. <laughs> but it was like there are 15 shows out of here. There were like six out of there. And then I asked I, I asked the editor in chief. I was like, who, I was like, who does blogging? And he's like, it's about 80, 20 New York, Chicago. And those they six kick shows our ass in likability and success. That's fine. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But work happens. But we work. Yeah. That work gets done. Right. And and whether you don't like it, that's fine. But like I hated seeing that. But then when when Dave's like no one works, then then, then people's jobs start getting put in, in, in danger. Mm. And it's like oh no one over there works anyway. Like. In the lists of shows I asked for, a lot of them are here, so people are fucking working. Right. And I, I, I don't like people saying that people aren't working here. What the fuck are you guys doing in that office? Right, but all to me, it's like, it's just people not enough to do. That's what it is. That's what it screams to me. I got an office full of people, not nothing to do, so they're just gonna, eventually you're gonna fuck with something. No one gets fired here for not being good at their jobs. <laughs> like, that doesn't happen. That's never happened in the history of ever. You can you, you start a start an alcohol company or say the n-word. Those are the only two things you can't do. Yeah. You can be bad at your job for a fucking decade. The office looks empty because we have a big fucking space. We have like <laughs> 12 content people. Who yeah. work. They all left. They all went to Chicago. <laughs> and not only that, but like you know, Jeff D. Lowe went you know to L.A. Roan is very busy. He's yeah. busting his ass. And we have chicks in the office. Well, they're on a mega tour. Trent often he comes in whenever he can. He busts his ass. Sometimes he's going and making zillions of dollars doing. I was gonna say, so a lot of the they people, got other things to do with the four play boys. <laughs> a lot of the people we have are busy doing big giant stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to make sure that's not what it is here. And the information I have, again, who knows the accuracy of it? The information I have is that it's not the case. That's the other thing I couldn't believe. Is Clemmer said at one point in the street, twenty people were involved Since in this. Since December, huh. three months ago. This yeah. is this is this is what drive. If I was Dave, this is what I would say. The Fileberg, more like this. What are these fucking 20 people doing? That's what I would say the Feilenberg. That's pretend time. What would you guys Nobody's come doing up with? anything productive. We just want the New York office to be as the best it can be. And I think we all just had different perspectives. I'm obviously really new. They've been here forever. Um, I, I don't know. I thought I, I thought it was a really interesting conversation. One of the things that was brought up was uh, the leadership around here. Yeah. Um, what do you, how do you see it um, in the ideal? What I feel like is transpiring now in our office. And there's a lot of reasons why. It's not just Dave. This is not just a Dave thing. It's we are a rudderless ship right now. We have no readership. And we have an office that's terrified to sneeze. Mm -hmm. And that is a culture for either that's shitty or either the safest, most like Lame delicate shit. content yeah. ever that no one really will like or nothing. I, I, there, there isn't right now. And like in the juxtaposed to like when I went to Chicago uh, last week, like it's just so clear. It's like, all right, Dan's in charge. You have a question, you have a, a big question, you can go to Dan. And, and yeah, and Dave's obviously always the boss. But like, who's in charge here? And obviously, if I had a major question, I would go to Kevin. But then it's like, Kevin, the guy? You know, so it's, it's just confusing. When when I was attempted to do it, and Dave went on uh, uh, unnamed show and was just like, I'm the, the, the boss of New York. Yeah, like, you cut your legs out on live TV. But it's just like, that's not that's not changing. Yeah, Kevin said he was in charge in New York. He, he put two people in position who had- I no don't know if that's true. Either. 
thousand, thousand percent. No, thousand. no, no. I when has Kevin said he's in charge in New York? First of all, I love when guys like Clemmer and like and like um, Kelly and Francis do this when they like say these things directly to my face when it's like I'm the one who tried and failed. Thanks, guys. Um, I can't. I, I wish I was like Dan, where I can just like tap you and Midas touch and turn you into a star. I'm not on that level. I would think that I would maybe be somebody to lean on and ask for help or get involved with, and nobody really takes me up on that offer. So between the people not really taking me up on it, and then Dave publicly being like, I'm the boss, he's not, I, I, I would feel foolish coming in here trying to continue to do that when I have been publicly told, like, you're not that guy. But I don't know that he's in, in charge, charge of New York. Do you but... consider yourself the leader in New York, Kevin? Like, like Dan is in Chicago or no? Uh, I mean, I'm trying to motivate everybody in New York, but I, at the end of the day, Dave is like obviously the guy who, who's running the show. I think Kevin did a good job with it, and and Kevin was um, motivated to do it. If it's not Kevin, it should be no one. I think it's a weird thing to just kind of declare someone a leader, where it's just like I don't know, go out, encourage each other, support each other. You shouldn't need a leader to do that. Just fucking do it. And to speaking of scared to make content. I think we ran into a situation. We ran into a situation with that. I think unlike one I've ever been in. When your last day, I still don't really understand Dave's logic. Cause like we weren't allowed to make content. We weren't allowed to. I was, people were not allowed to speak to me. So I walked in after solitaire, I get out, but I walked in, you could smell the fear in the room. We were, we was, were all, there was a lot of people here who were excited to like film it and be like, clever. Yeah, like when I walked out, I walked into the content for it, you could like smell the fear in the room. I, I immediately knew like something was just like not right. And even beyond them like not talking. And then I looked in some of the eyes and they're like, you would, you, almost like a deer in headlights. People were, were really like terrified. Uh, but yeah, I guess it was an order from top down to not have contact with It was like, yeah, it was that's wild. Okay, multiple people, multiple people came and were like, just so you know, no cameras allowed. To take it to the level of, there is a decree, do not react. That to me is shtick, that's acting, that's phony, that's everything Barstool has never been. Let that guy walk out of the room and what happens happens. Yeah. That's Barstool. And I just like, I totally agree with what Kevin said, 100%, which is like, that's not authentic. Like what we do ideally is always like reacting. Now, whether it be a negative reaction or positive reaction, whatever it's gonna be is fine, mm -hmm. but there needs to be an honest reaction. I think that's, that's important to me. And I think that's what we didn't get. But you don't tell people you cannot react to something. That's and, not and Barstool. There's a chance that this is one of those things where, like, we might be getting gas, by the way. Yeah, that this is. I, I, I'm, I'm positive this is going at least through gas. Yes. Yeah, the big man. We asked. Uh, uh, you know, there was a lot of people walking on pins and needles on that day, so I was being extra. Like, what do you want to do here, here, here? And yeah, I, I said, I think I had the text message. I think he said I did not like it. I don't understand. I there, there's a part of me believes that there has to have been some kind of miscommunication between the two, because I don't get it. I don't understand the logic behind it. Cause it wasn't like, that wasn't turned into content. The fact, like if he was gonna do it as a way to sewer New York and then be like, look at these motherfuckers, they didn't even give a shit, but he didn't do that. He said, nope, air, don't even react. Tell people to just act normal like nothing happened. No cameras to go rush to him or anything. So that was the message to pass along. And that's, seems like everyone did their job in that sense. <laughs> Um, I don't know why, there was no more like, this is why, this is that. Was it the right move or the wrong move? I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about that, I'm sure, on the show tomorrow. But yeah, seems like everyone did their job. I don't get the angle for like not allowing us to participate in it. Maybe it was just a punishment, but I don't, I didn't get that one at all. I, di I disagree with that decision. In the Clemmer situation, I think he probably, Dave probably went a little too far with like telling people what they can and can't do. But that's like one time out of, you know, a billion. I, I, I can't, I really can't pinpoint any other time that he told people, here's what you are allowed and not allowed to do. So let's say he went full blown North Korea on this one and, you know, controlled what was being said. Okay. That's the only time I can really say he did that. I was, I was very plugged in. I thought cutting the stream was obviously the right move. <laughs> the fact that people disagreed with that was crazy. I thought Friday morning was electric. Would you have talked to him when he came out? If Dave told me not to, I wouldn't know. <laughs> There's a chance he, we got gazed. There, there is, and if, and if we did, I definitely did, because I spoke to Gaz. I was like, what did he say? 
And so I explained exactly what I just did to him, where I was like, I just don't get this. Like, yeah, I guess there's a chance we got gas, but I don't, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think he would have lied about that, but who knows, it's gas. I think, I think I said it to you, I think he was just like, in his mind, from where he was, that the stream was over at when you stepped, when you stepped out. Mm. And he's like, there's just no more, like, that type of thing. But that shouldn't stop someone else from... But then why would not want... Unless he thought come maybe... Out of there. Unless he thought maybe it would be better. Hmm. I don't know. I know he was just mad. I think he was just mad at everybody. That yeah, so it was I just like a punishment. Then it's a punishment. Yeah, he's uh, like, no one talked to him because you guys were trying to make content around it and fucked up what I was trying to do. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. then it just was like, just no one fucked with him because let me do my thing. Maybe that's what it was. But he was, his thing was done. Yeah, I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> Tune into the name show, 11:30 Thursdays. <laughs> and and his idiotic thing of like I, I banned cameras and all this shit. Oh yeah, I was wondering. What, I, I'm very interested. I am very interested. In that. North yes. Korea. When he walked out and quit, which was victory, he saw he started talking to somebody, and a cameraman Arya was scru scurrying around. And we had I, more people in the booth than I even knew. So that's why he's like, oh, I better stay because there's cameras, there's people following me. So I yelled at Pete. I said, get all the fucking camera people out of there so he doesn't know what's going on. He's seen cameras. I go, I want it gone. I want to think he's alone sitting there. No, I talked to Gaz. I'm like, just like he doesn't exist. So that was it. I could see I was misinterpreted, but was it this big like, oh, you can't make content? Also, Clemmer, didn't you that five was a, minutes? Oh, no, I will oh, give you an example. Then I will get, then shut the fuck you, up and let me answer. You can't talk all kinds of shit. And then when the moment comes, act like a fucking pussy. I'm not shut. acting like a pussy. You fucking you talk fucking shut the fuck the up, Kurt. Shut, shut, shut the fucking fuck up. Shut the fuck up. I fucking own you. I fucking own you. Yeah, that's it. Drop the mic, you fucking pussy. Because what you, you won't shut up. I want to answer the question. What are you, you afraid of content? What are you afraid? I'm not afraid of anything, Dave. Kevin Clancy, you suck on his tit. Be a fucking man. You call it your own fucking content with 22 people in a fucking stuff. And you get fired, so it's a win, right? I don't think I'm entirely wrong with the leadership thing, but I think I was wrong with how I phrased it. And I think that there is a middle ground somewhere. And that's kind of what I'm wondering. All right, Iowa goes down to Illinois by like 20 points. That's it for the Storm Chasers journey. Year six, I think, five. First year without a storm. We tried four games this week, clear skies across America. It's really, really sunny for everybody. It was a bad look for the fellas. Everybody's like, we need leadership. And then one time I'm no. like, let's be accountable. And everyone's like, well, what? what? I don't know. Oh, wait. I wanted positivity. Did you? So you rescinded your apology after you saw? Nikki Smokes being, yeah. Nikki Smokes was like, well, I, uh, I should have just like stormed. Like, dude, that's not what I'm saying at all. I wasn't saying that you should have stormed when you were losing. I'm saying do something to make the crowd have an impact on the game. Like, what do you think they should have done differently? I think that their energy level was extremely low for everything. <laughs> We may be looking at over one here, folks. I didn't see any clips of them like going crazy, trying to foment anything from the crowd. Like I lost my voice every night of when we were doing Storm Chaser. They were putting out limp dick content, and then everybody's feelings got hurt. I don't, I don't dislike them as people. I want them to elevate the content that they make because this is a great concept, and it's a concept that we made uh, good. I'm not mad at them, but I don't think that they wanted to do it didn't seem like they really badly wanted to do it their best moment that they had was when they're getting kicked out of this the student section they didn't really make any a meal out of that they kind of like went softly into the night tickets are four you have to sit where your tickets are all right we have students the students only in the student section you got Xavier student ids to match them if you don't you're leaving i think i not a thing you're either a student that has an id or you're not I mean, I, I didn't even expect this to be like a storyline that I'm like disappointed in them. It was like kind of just like a one-off thing. But if people want to know my feelings on it, like I'll tell you my feelings about it. It was limited content. We, we couldn't get a storm. Um, we tried, but we, we've done what they do every year. They go to four games in the final week of the season. That's what we did. Unfortunately, all the games sucked. They were down early. We tried to fire people up as much as we could, but when you're down 10, 15 points almost immediately, it's a little bit hard. Roan said you guys had to bring more energy from the stands down to the players to force a storm upon them. How do you reply to that? That's difficult to do. 
that's it's difficult to do that uh, to will a team to victory from wherever you are. I feel like the crowds were, were pretty good. We were like, look, if they win, we're gonna storm, right? We're gonna storm. There's clear skies, Zoe. <laughs> clear skies. A sunny, a sunny week in America. But unfortunately, we they just didn't win any games. We weren't gonna storm if they lost. What percent blame? <laughs> this is a this is Rowan's question. What percent blame do you guys have for the teams not winning? You gotta go like 85%, I think. I think we deserve a ton of blame for the teams not. Um, you know, we should have maybe been drawing up some plays, holding it up on a whiteboard to them. You're being sarcastic. It's not. It's, we got he's gonna be mad at that. We got a storm last year. I would say we tried, but all we do is sit here and root for the team. Nikki Smokes and Za, they were they're our energy guys. Serious question. You're blaming Nikki Smokes no, and Za since they're the energy guys. So what are you? Me and Glenn aren't the biggest like, let's fucking go, people. That's just not our, our bag. It literally didn't even drizzle. No, no storm. Did you try and rush <laughs> the state? They lost. Every team lost. <laughs> you can storm when you lose them. You can't. You can't storm. You can't. <laughs> you, you create the storm. That's what you seem to not understand. I know you guys are being sarcastic, but it's still annoying. <laughs> Ronan Caleb called a bunch of storms. Yeah, I think like storm chasers <laughs> right now is like the office about Steve Carell. Like, Clumber, you know what we did last week? We brought the company money. You locked yourself in a room for a hundred hours. <laughs> but here's the difference, with Tommy. I did mine. Like mine's unique. You had a brand. <laughs> what we did last week is <laughs> a successful thing. That's so much worse. <laughs> to be fair, I was away all week. I I don't know how many storms did you get. <laughs> we, we don't play the games. Uh, uh. <laughs> Because Nikki Smokes reached out and he was like, you were right, we do need to be better. And I was like, hell yeah. He did it all behind though. Yeah, yeah. We that. Accountability. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then Tommy Smokes... Uh, oh, behind closed doors shit? Yeah, but I'm bringing it to light. And then Tommy down. Smokes was like, I disagree with Nikki Smokes. I did not I said, say that. There was I nothing that we could have done better. I'm talking about this. I absolutely did There's not There's nothing we could have done better. I did not say that. I said there are things that for next year I definitely think we could change and do better. Do you think that they should start it earlier? Started earlier, and then, and whatever no, like, they have to do. Like, no, like, like beginning of January, and they just go to look and find one. I think that that's a convenient excuse, though. We only ever had a week. We only ever did one yeah, week. You, you caused the storm, though. Yeah, I mean, we brought the storm. Because you had the ability to do that. Well, we, we just we, wanted it. They should have it. brought the storm. We wanted it. We were, we were making hard-hit content. If you went out there right now, you'd, start, you'd get one in three days. I can get a storm. You know why? <laughs> because you we are the MSG, storm. You might have to go to MSG tonight for the Big East right now. Honestly, I have the Doppler radar in my blood. <laughs> Like they don't storm neutral site. We should start oh, that's, early. Again, that's the attitude. <laughs> right. you have. That's the attitude yeah. you have. Go to a high school. Uh, is there still a high school championship? Like, turn the machines back on. Like, you guys should get the fucking band back together. No, there's <laughs> there's got to be something. There has to be something. Division two, division three. There's storms to be had. You act like there's. You can't find a, a drop of rain in I America. I mean, Rico said we could go to Colt, maybe Colgate tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, maybe, maybe I need to do it all. Maybe I need to hold their hand as they walk onto the court. Maybe I need training wheels going on the court. The only storm left in the country is Wednesday. Wednesday. If you're looking for one, Tommy, I think there's one or two left. That's about it. Fucking Rico Bosco. Roan, Rico, everybody's like, oh, you gotta get a fucking storm. You gotta go to Colgate Wednesday night. Like, Rico, the other day, they're gonna storm Colgate. Rico, let's go. And he's like, oh, I don't know, I gotta go to Chicago on Thursday. <laughs> understating this like what Rico just did. I'm getting fucked yeah. right now <laughs> I'm getting <laughs> fucked in every direction is what's happening people are like you got to go to fucking Colgate other people are gonna be like if you don't go like no matter what happens I can't win here it's either why the fuck did you go to a Colgate Lehigh game on Wednesday night for like <laughs> and whose whose idea was to oh Rico, Rico. <laughs> That's what I'm he wants to go to Rico, Colgate he got Bosco all right, we've arrived in beautiful Hamilton, New York, right at Colgate University. We're bringing a storm tonight. It's our last shot. We need a storm. I'm not leaving the season without a storm. A storm is a storm, and we looked at the history. We looked at the forecast. A storm is in the air at Colgate University tonight. Colgate University, a storm is coming tonight. <laughs>
did, you know, led the storm. Uh, people wanted a storm, they got a storm. I know people, you know, are like, oh, they were nine point favorites at home. They won the fucking conference. Roan said, go, go lead a storm. He said, don't find a storm, lead a storm. I was in fucking center court by myself in a fucking yellow rain jacket. Once more, beat the sunrise. Today we have pickleball. First pickleball open of the year. We'll see how this goes. I mean, uh, pickleball is a different animal. Man, first one of the year. Looks great. A little crisp, but there's this excitement in the air. It's gonna be a great day. Yeah, it's like it's the infancy of of something that could possibly be big. You watch this back in two or three years if the Barca pickleball open it exploded come back to the grind at Jacksonville. It was a grind. We're doing it on a Tuesday. We're trying to do this whole thing at the bar, at, at the TPC, um, at the Player Championship. So we're here outside the gates of TPC Sawgrass. And we're like, all right, we'll do a pickleball event Tuesday. We'll do a golf event Wednesday. We got merch in the tent all week. This is a big rob. You guys an absolute nut. Up, you guys an absolute nut. yards. <laughs> Pump started with a, a little Excel sheet. Now we got a legit set up here. And Excited to see where it goes. I, I also can't even imagine the shit talk that this guy had about me in the past couple weeks. Just, really? oh yeah, I've just been, I've just been all over him. He's Both ride, these he's guys. He's riding me like a, like a, like a fucking cowboy. Kentucky Derby style. Save a horse, ride a Justin. I want to thank everybody for showing up today. Thanks to Body Armor Water and Body Armor uh, Zero Sugar. It's going to be all over the courts. So make sure you guys are hydrating with Body Armor. If you win this thing, you get an awesome chain. That's the, that's the thing that I think everyone's going to be rooting for. Yeah, I've played pickleball twice, so I've never lost. I played with Larry Fitzgerald, and I played with that pro in like California or everywhere. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I'm excited to watch. People that are good at pickleball, it's incredibly impressive. I know. It's crazy good hand eye coordination. Man, it's insane. And also, the logo is the best logo in the world. It's <laughs> like you're getting like. You're getting really, really athletic females involved in this, which is something that we haven't been able to do at Barstool. And like, you're watching some of this talent out here, it's fucking nuts. All right, and we're halfway through the Barstool Pickleball Open. The first wave of players have come and gone. We have champions, and now the 4.0 and 4.5 plus divisions are here. I don't know how much they're going to show in this recap on school scenes of just how incredible the competition is going to get. And that's no shade on the people from today. We have our two um, women's champions right here. Oh, no. Champions. Oh, oh. hello. You'd like to say a word. Oh yeah, go ahead. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Barstool, for having us. Wow, they got to think you had this planned or something. I did not have this We really plan. loved our experience. It's such a bright, sunny day, and Jess Perry's team is the MVP right here. I just Most stood valuable there. pickleball player. I just stood on the court. That's all I did. <laughs> Thank you. Great job, girl. So that's what I'm saying. Honestly, people think I think that was planned. It was not. We're halfway through. The playoffs are starting right now. Things are heating up, and the weather is heating up. I'm starting to sweat. Need to hydrate. Body armor. Look at that. Zero sugar. Fruit punch is my favorite flavor. Let me get a little bit of this. Delicious, delicious flavor, great hydration. Thank you to Body Armor. Thank you for sponsoring Barstool Pickleball. It's been a great event so far. It's only gonna get better. Thank you, Body Armor. It's been a great event. You guys did an absolute hell of a job. Having a great time. Barstool's absolutely crushed it on this one. Fantastic, fantastic. Thanks for having us. Yeah. It's been a great time. Playing some good pickleball. Oh.
athletes and our champions of the 4.0 division, the men's division, by the way. I made, I made a point about this in the beginning of the day, and some people were like, we're going to have a woman play in the men's division? She won the damn thing! It's Karen Cohen and Karen Tatsik Coaches! You won the 4.0 division! Way to go, guys! The storm um. the storm has been chased. No, the storm hasn't been chased. The storm was created. Yeah. In Hamilton, New York. Um like what type of storm would you compare it to? <laughs> Katrina, probably. <laughs>